Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, Twitter, and Rumble. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. There is a genre alive today that has survived 90 years of evolution, causing people to live in fear. Hollywood has created a monster and given it the name Sharksploitation. It's because of Jaws. Shark craze which has gripped America. Suddenly society developed this massive fear of sharks. Sharkmania. Movie that made $100 million and everybody wanted some of that. Our focus was creating a shark. We weren't thinking about what it was going to do to the future. Great white. Man eater. Deep blue sea. Shark puss. Shark tornado. The shallows. The Meg. Sharks were everywhere. You watch shark movies, you watch shark documentaries. This creature is a Hollywood celebrity. The shark is a natural monster in the ocean. Why we are scared when we're standing in three feet of water at the shore? Sharks. It ignites something in us that makes us feel alive. Shark exploitation. Stream now on Shudder. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 545. Releasing July 21 on Shudder is Shark Exploitation, a documentary that analyzes a subgenre of film in which the shark plays a starry role in films ranging from the iconic to the ridiculous. A deep dive into a fascinating evolution of a still prolific form of movie making. Shark Exploitation also marked the directorial debut of Stephen Scalata. I'm glad to say Joy's been now on the podcast. Stephen, thank you so very much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. So it's interesting the title, Shark Exploitation. I mean, exploitation, just in its own, it's always been part of the entertainment industry, right? Once one big hit comes along, then everyone else is going to take their, their piece of it and make their own little thing of it, and boom, you've got a, you got a million uh, you know, variations of it. Usually, though, these ex- like exploitation films are designated to like a decade or an era. Um, with a shark exploitation film, it, it keeps evolving to the point where we've got now like over 200 movies just uh, attached to that sub- subgenre on its own. I know you're a big fan of shark movies. I mean, you wouldn't do this film without you know without being so. But were you surprised by the, by the breadth and the, and the size of just how big this subgenre was? Because to tell you the truth, like even though I'm a big fan of shark movies as well, I had no idea it was like that many was made over the years. Oh yeah, man! Like I, I think <laughs> I'm laughing because when I started it, I think I was a little naive, like. You know, I'm just really passionate about it. And then so one of the first things I started doing was after I did a couple of interviews is like I started putting together an Excel sheet of every shark movie. And oh, my goodness, man. Like, I, yeah, as you, you just said, like 200 shark movies, you know, there is over 200 shark movies. It, it was like I couldn't believe it myself. I was like, really? It's it, it's it's pretty it's insane yeah um, I can't believe it I can't believe that many have been made maybe I would you know I'm happy I started shooting the movie before I made this Excel sheet because maybe it would have freaked me out to make the movie because it's so huge and it's also ninety years like it starts in like the 1930s you know it, mm. that's that's insane to think about. When you're looking back on that spreadsheet, that Excel spreadsheet, where do you see the biggest bump in like of, of like films? Was it is it post Jaws, or do you find that it's been more the last ten years when sci-fi really starting to get into Sharknado and stuff, and a lot of those things were released at an almost kind of weekly basis? Which one was more kind of like prolific at, at, in those decades? It's pretty wild. It's like yeah, you get the you get a little bump with Jaws, you know. And because, uh, you know, in like 87, it kind of dies out. And then Deep Blue Sea comes out. And then after Deep Blue Sea, you get this rise of like the straight to video movies. And it's a big bump. It's a little it's a it's a big bump because you had it throughout the 2000s, mostly with New Millennium. But yeah, I think it's like, let, let me see, like it's almost like um, 
mega shark versus giant octopus almost starts like this other wave and then sharknado comes out and then when sharknado comes out that's when you're getting like multiple shark movies a year like you start seeing like like five shark movies a year almost and then i gotta say man like when i pitched i pitched this movie i mean we pitched it i have two incredible producers josh miller and carrie dignam roy um, one person said, I don't know why you want to make this documentary. They don't even make these movies anymore. And then all of a sudden I was like, I went back and it was like, as of recent, there's almost been like 15 shark movies a year, you know, including like foreign ones and the wild eye releasing ones. And there is all, I mean, it's insane. I think there's now, I think we're in a bigger bump now than we ever have been, believe it or not. Like it, it's, it's insane. Like, um, like 2002, I'm looking on my sheet, like there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven that came out in like 2004. I haven't updated this sheet in a little while because I got a little burned out. Oh, here's one, for instance. Okay, 2000, okay, 2021. I'm going to count them really quick. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18 18 movies in 2021 that's crazy it is crazy but i think what what i think kind of like has spurned on the stuff now is that back in the 70s and such you have to do things practically filming in water is not an easy task whether you're universal pictures with steven spielberg or like a little you know independent company in italy that's ripping off you know steven spielberg it's not an easy thing well, these days with the CGI and everything, you kind of re- can, can kind of pop the shark wherever you want. Um, and it's really what's really interesting, interesting to me, though, that going back to those films in the 70s where you had kind of like the Jaws effect um, and it brought about this real kind of fear of sharks. Um, there's a there's a phobia that you guys talk about in the film. It's, uh, I'm going to see if I can get the pronunciation right. The lasso phobia, I think, I think is how, how it goes. And that talks about like the fear people have like of the ocean and underwater, right? Do you think that that Jaws effect created that, or do you think Jaws kind of like unearthed something that's really primal in our in our species as an evolution? It's like we're just a species that have been trying to get eaten by every every bloody thing around us, whether it be the ocean or or the land. And I imagine that film, in the way that it does so, really tapped into something that's just within, within our DNA. I think the movie helped. It was probably a phobia people had, but for me personally, I, it messed me up. Jaws messed me up. I mean, Jaws is, I have many layers to Jaws. It's my favorite movie of all time. I think it's perfect. It's a movie that made me become a filmmaker. It also made me terrified of sharks. It made me terror to this day. I can't stay in the ocean if I go on vacation longer than five minutes, I got to get out of the water. I'm terrified because of Jaws. And it's just, you know, he, Spielberg is such an, an incredible filmmaker that he just, he made the movie too good, you know? Because I always wonder in my head, like, what if a different filmmaker tackled that movie? Mm. You know, I don't know if it would have resonated as much with other people. It's just that he was so talented and so he made it too good. You know, but I I feel for myself and probably lots of people that I talk to throughout the process of making the movie. Yeah, it really did affect us. Hardcore. It did affect us, you know, but that's just because it's a master. It's because it was made so damn good. That's probably why. I'm here in in Sydney, Australia, and not far from the ocean. And we have a very healthy respect, but also a healthy fear of sharks. So I think that's where I kind of stand on it. I have a strong fear of them, but I respect them as a species. Like it's, I'm not going to wade into the water and then wonder why it's going to a, a possibility, which is very rare, but a possibility that something could eat me because I'm walking into their home. If someone walks into my home and I didn't invite them, I'd be pretty pissed too. Um, if if that was like the reasoning for it. What's really kind of uh, interesting looking back at some of these earlier films is that there's a kind of a cruelty and disrespect that a lot of filmmakers and stunt people had when working with sharks. There was movies where they were actually attacking sharks to provoke them, unintentionally or intentionally killing them. And then there's that movie Shark with um, uh, Burt Reynolds where a stuntman 
gets mauled by a shark, which again comes to an ignorance of 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 of, of the species. But what's interesting is that as we as more about sharks have come to light and we know the facts, we know everything else, not only does the fear of the shark still stay prominent, but as you just said, said in your spreadsheet, the shark movie is still very, very high and interesting. And I find it very interesting too. And I find it just very interesting as well, because even though the science tells us otherwise, we just can't let go of what things like Jaws and how it's seeped into pop culture just kind of has almost programmed us to, to have a very healthy um a fear of these animals. No, you're absolutely right. Because like in the seventies, Jaws comes out, we're all terrified of sharks and it's not Spielberg's fault. He just, he got a, he had a job, he did it and he did it incredibly, but it was people. It gets in your head like, Oh, these things are, are terrible. I need to, to kill them. So filmmakers themselves are treating them awful and, and killing them on film. And I think what just happens, you know, and, you know, Peter Benchley regretted writing Jaws and regretted the demonization of them. And he turned his life around and put out there like, hey, you know, they're biting you and they let you go. They're not trying to eat you. And I think what's interesting is that when Sharknado comes out and we get this new wave of films, now they're more silly and now i think it's even before sharknado i can't say it's sharknado probably from the meg the, the early mega shark stuff it's just now they're hybriding sharks you know they're just doing you know now it's shark now it's sand sharks now it's snow sharks now it's you know so it almost became a parody in a way hmm. so i don't think there are and i i think i think it's interesting how we went from the 70s where they were terrifying the way we were looking at them and now what the sci-fi channel did with them, which I think is pretty cool, is they made them kind of comic in a way, you know, which now, which kind of takes a little bit of the demonization off of them. Yeah, we should definitely be fear them, you know, they're, they're animals. You know, like we still get how many alligator movies, you know, I, I love them. All. I love all those alligator movies and stuff like that because it's just, you know, they're, they're animal, you know, you can't, <laughs> you know, you don't know what they're going to do, you know. And especially how much now we're polluting the environment and everything. And you don't know what that's doing to them as well. But I love what, I mean, yeah, a lot of people, you know, they give me a lot of crap for liking sci-fi channel movies, for liking asylum movies, for liking wild eye releasing movies. I, I enjoy it. I just, I love, you know, there was a movie that came out called Shark Side of the Moon. They went to the moon and there were sharks walking around. Dude, I loved that movie. I thought it was awesome. It was like, wow, this is creative and inventive. I just love what they're doing to the genre because, you know, you could, you know, Jaws is my favorite movie. And I spent my whole life as a kid chasing down every shark movie I could find. I was chasing that dragon. I was chasing that Jaws high. The closest I got was when Deep Blue Sea came out. The movie blew my mind. That was the closest I ever got to Jaws. But, um, you know, we'll never I don't think I'll, I'll ever catch that dragon again, but I can at least watch a lot of these movies and get a different enjoyment for them. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Tee Public. Tee Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, Tee Public is sure to have something you will love. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Amazon. The world's leading online store, Amazon is your first stop to buy a wide range of products at competitive prices with fast delivery times. Amazon is also a world-class entertainment hub that includes Prime Video, Audible, Twitch, Amazon Music, and more. Sign up with Amazon today and experience the best in online shopping and entertainment. Please support Matt's Movie Reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. I think something that's really interesting as well when it comes to the whole fascination of sharks and shark attacks, etc., is um, how YouTube is kind of like almost kind of taken over to kind of like there's a shark uh, attack experience people now can post their own videos they're out there kayaking with their gopros i don't know if you ever watch a video like that and then all of a sudden they might get a bump or a fin will go past 
well, and then they'll probably freak out, you know. Um, and what's so funny about some of these videos is like sometimes it will end there, so you don't know <laughs> what's the next step. Probably nothing, because usually it is nothing. Um, but I find it kind of fascinating how kind of like the the uh, YouTube social media kind of aspect has kind of taken over where movies themselves has delved into the silly. The realistic part of it comes from like, you know, just some guy from in California just paddling away and there's a shark right next to him. I think that's a real fascinating part of it as well. Uh, yeah, YouTube with two things. There's A, the thumbnails lie. They'll put this yes. massive shark with this dude swimming, which is very, you know, come on. But there's an, there was a YouTube video I watched or was it an Instagram video of a guy jumping off of a dock. And he, he jumped off the dock. All of his friends are like, yo, there's a shark in there. And he was like, had to maneuver himself to get to the stairs. Like that was one of the most intense videos I have seen. Like I can't remember, you know, there, there are new shark movies that come out that I do like, like Shark Bait that came out last year. I, I love that movie. I, I mm. tell people all the time to check it out. But with that Instagram video, that guy escaping that shark after, you know, just, you know, I'm going to jump off this dock into the water. That was a thrilling video of like, holy crap. That was. And I think that was, that might have been filmed in Sydney, in Sydney, in Darling Harbour, I think as well, if I can, if I remember. Because I think I've seen kind of variations of that video as well. Um, going back to your fandom for shark movies, um, and I'm a fan of them as well. If someone came up to you and said, look, i never seen these films, you know, I want to put together three movies for like a shark weekend for like, you know, with shark week coming up. If you could give them two or three films outside of Jaws, which would you give them to watch? And it can be films of any variety or what have you, but which three would you say, you know what, these are the ones that I choose that I think you will get the the most kick out of as a kind of like the ultimate kind of like shark movie experience. Wow, three. That's that's. I would definitely say Deep Blue Sea for sure because I think that's. I think it's the second for me. It's my. It's I feel it's the second best shark movie. You know, um, I think, God, and it's tough because you know, it's tough deciding from. Oh man, it's a tough one because I have. They're, they're just ones that I think are solid. All right. So, yeah, I'll say Deep Blue Sea, 47 meters down mm. because it's a different take on it. So you have – and then what would be my third? That's a tough one. Man, this is a hard question for me because <laughs> um, now I would uh, – I'm sorry. I want to take too long on this. Um, my mind – I mean – uh, I guess I would say maybe the last shark from 1981 because it's such a fun Jaws ripoff um, from the 80s. You'll get to see, you know, I, I would say those three. I mean, it's a very it's a very difficult question to choose three. Deep Blue Sea, Last Shark, 47 meters down. You know, it, it's hard not to say the shallows because I think that's another solid one. The reef is really solid. Now I'm cheating, so I'm going to stop. Yeah, but <laughs> like it's a, it's a, and I think that's like it goes to the – when people think, think shark movie, of course you've got to have your your tropes, right? But I think it also comes down to there are so many – you know, in the, although it's a subgenre, there are different genres within the subgenre. You've got fun, silly ones, you've got tense ones, you've got comedic ones, you've got all of them put together. And I think for me what I love about this movie – above all is that it's an education in shark movies and for uh, like a movie kind of saw like myself I, I always have like a list of films like oh, i want to watch this one i want to watch that one you know and so something like um uh you know just looking at my list here um like um uh uh tinta um tinterera um look pretty cool last shark look pretty cool um you know films like that open water i've seen um but yeah like you know, but the one i have one i haven't seen yet is the um uh uss indianapolis movie the one that i uh, starred nicholas cage i don't know whether that's any good or not but it's it's, it's an interesting story so it'd be pretty cool to watch that have, have you seen that one yes i did um i think i'm a mario van peebles fan you know not besides his directing his acting i'm just a huge fan of his so i think i'm biased towards that one you know, but um, he's, you know, but um, yeah, but you bring up Tintorara. I think it's a hard one to watch because of a lot of real shark killings, but it is mm. a very, but I, but it is a good movie. It's, there's nothing else like Tintorara. Like 
it's it, you know it's very enjoyable i think there's two different endings to it um <clears throat> tatara is great yeah that's that's a it's a it's unlike anything else you know it's like uh it's you know i think the woman we interviewed rebecca mckendry explains this it's sexploitation and sharksploitation <laughs> in, in, in the same movie but yeah there is there's so many different genres like there's there's like there is like the treasure hunt movies you know there's the survival horror you know there's the yeah. based in on true events movie you know there's the silly shark movies you know there there is many sub genres themselves in shark films there's environmental you know that now there's like a new ones where there where, where sharks and aliens you know it, it, it's pretty nuts man yeah weaponized sharks cures for cancer sharks you know there is like you know there's my you know mind controlled and sharks there's there's so many sub genres that's what's so interesting about the shark genre it's about what they're throwing into it you know and that's why i like a lot of these silly ones you know but I do like the good ones, you know, like when I cat when one really catches me by surprise, I'm so happy, you know, it's like, oh, my God, that's a, that's that's good. You know, I'm so happy when I see a good one. But, you know, but I can turn off my brain to enjoy one that, you know, other people might not think is good. I, I, I feel bad saying, you know, putting down shark movies. But, you know, I mean, there are some I really just can't handle. I'm like, all right, you were just. You know, you're trying, you know, there was no attempt here, but the ones where they're at least they're trying, you know, there was one called I couldn't get to it in the movie. I was bummed. There was one called Planet of the Sharks. Um, mm -hmm. It's water world with sharks. You know, I, a lot of people don't like it, but I I enjoyed it. You know, it's you know, it was like it was different, you know, and I, I respect what they tried to do. I think the last Deep Blue Sea movie, the Deep Blue Sea 3 was pretty great. It was like one of my favorite films of 2020. And as I mentioned, Shark Bait is a underrated movie that no one talks about that came out in 2022 last year. And I was shocked. No one was talking about that one. I was like, that was, that was pretty solid. I thought. Was that from the director? Um, oh, what was his name? James. Um, James oh, Nunn. Yeah. He, James he Nunn. He did, um, he did one shot with um, uh, Steve <laughs> Atkinson. Uh, yeah. It was fantastic. Film as well. One shot is freaking awesome. Isn't yeah. it? It's so good. Yeah. He, he makes really, I love it when he works with Scott Atkins. Yeah. You know, it's like when Scott Atkins works with James Nunn and he works with that other guy. I'm forgetting his name. The guy. Oh, uh, that Jess, um, Jesse, Jerry, yes. Jesse Ventura, Jesse Veteran or something like that. Yeah. 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 When he when Scott Atkins works with one of those two filmmakers, I'm so psyched. I'm like, awesome. Yeah, I can talk about that's another conversation. I could talk Scott Atkins all day. Well, it's only natural, yeah. Dan, when we need a movie where it's got Atkins versus a shark. We've had Jason Statham versus a Megalodon. Now we need Scott <laughs> Atkins versus a shark, right? So, Please, man. We need that so bad. Man, Statham killing it this year, man. Fast X, Expendables 4, The Meg 2, mm. you know, Operation Mill. He's, like, killing it, man. I'm so excited for him. <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm, um, so for everyone out there listening, July 21 on Shudder, Shark Exploitation. I really recommend everyone check out this film because – if you like, even if uh, if you're a novice to the shark um, uh, movie kind of like uh, experience or whether you are a big fan of it, you're going to learn something from this documentary because, you know, I haven't watched it myself and uh, just, like I said, taking notes of all the different movies and just the breadth of the movies, like we're just talking to over 200 films. It's, I can't think of another subgenre where it has that much movies attached to it and just the history of sharks in pop culture from the mythology to what Hollywood has done with it and mixed in with the, the real science and everything else. It's just a, a fascinating documentary about fascinating movie making, about fascinating species. And Stephen Scalata, thank you so very much for your time today. It's been a joy to talk to you. And um, I can't wait to see, you know, if you get back in, into directing again, I think you did a really great job here. And uh, I can't wait to to hear um, the pop, your podcast up and running again, hopefully soon. And um, yeah, until then, man, uh, take care and best of luck with the film's release. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.